Hey guys, this is a quick video of a teardown of the uh, Ambi screen. This is the uh, 4K version, which means nothing more than it comes with a cheap uh, HDMI HDCP 2.2, supposedly 4K 60Hz 444 compliant splitter. It is not HDCP 2.2 compliant, and its downscaling is very intermittent. They have begun packaging the Ambi screen with this splitter here to sell it as a 4K capable product. This is just nothing more than the 1080p version they've previously been selling where they've now included a splitter calling the entire package a 4K uh, Ambi screen. Now I just want to open this up and show you guys the uh, workmanship's quality on the inside of this thing, solder quality and the assembly. Uh, techniques they use to make this thing happen. Uh, looking from the outside with this injection molded plastic case you wouldn't suspect that the quality would be as bad on the inside as it is but uh, that's why I'm making the video just so I can crack it open and show you what these guys are putting together and selling as a uh, assembled and, and finished product here. So I've already taken the screws out just to speed this up a little bit and I want to, the first thing I want to point out to you is that at some point they may have had plans to make this a more official actual engineered product because as you can see they've got posts here to where a circuit card could be mounted um, it looks to me like these um, slots for the fan or for ventilation here may have been machined out after the injection molding uh, which is either by design or just something they uh, thought up along the way. You can see that they've removed some material and they actually used super glue to uh, make this fan stick to the uh, lid of the ambi screen. When mine arrived in the mail, the uh, fan had already detached from the lid and was buzzing around inside of the case. And that was this little guy right here. So I'll start with that fan and how they've chosen to connect it up to the power instead of making a purpose-built connector that included the fan they um, slipped the wires up inside the connector and pressed it onto the uh, pin headers on this Raspberry Pi knockoff which is called an Orange Pi Zero uh, that they programmed with basically Hyperion which is an open source project for doing um, ambient lighting now since I'm on to the uh, Orange Pi Zero, I'll quickly show you the uh, solder work here that they use to actually send the uh, digital signal out to the um, to the uh, HDMI port here. So inside of here they've taken a bit of um, copper clad laminate um, hobby do-it-yourself circuit card and they've actually attempted to make their own circuit uh, right here on this soldering by uh, creating purposeful solder bridges and stacking components uh, along the two rails here. Um, what you're seeing is a couple of resistors they've included on the on the general purpose or GPIO out pins of this Orange Pi Zero with a transistor and a couple of resistors used to drop the um, data signal for RGB strips to 0.7 times the VCC of the strip. And that solder work has already caused this unit to fail here. This transistor is no longer uh, sending out a signal. So for about the first day this thing worked, um, it failed. And I used a logic analyzer to see what kind of signal it was sending out on the um, center pin wire here that connects to the uh, RGB strips. So this kind of uh, slap shod solder work here where they're building a circuit and lakes, literally lakes of solder on a um, do-it-yourself breadboard instead of creating a purpose-built PCB. So the next thing I want to point out is that they've used multiple types of adhesive inside of this case to make everything stick and fit together and just kind of glued it all in place. So you're seeing a little bit of a RTV black silicone there. You're seeing some hot glue. Uh, there's zip ties. Uh, there's even super glue. Let's see, what else can I talk about here? Some of the components were damaged when they installed it uh, just because they were probably slapping these things together in such a rush that you can see this HDMI connector here. Just a regular HDMI cord used inside of there was zip tied in from these commercial off-the-shelf splitters which are about $3 on eBay. They actually damaged this inductor here, literally shearing it off of its um, component base where it was a surface mount to the card. And then instead of um, 
routing dedicated power lines to a lot of these uh, circuit cards here. They basically just ran wires from wherever they could find power inside the case, desoldered a component, and slapped it in. Um, case in point here is uh, powering this HDMI to AV um, converter here, which is $3 on eBay. Looks like they desoldered a component and ran power wires uh, straight into it. Um, so I am a soldering technician that's been trained um, with IPC soldering standards and every every piece of soldering work completed inside of this thing would fail standards. So this thing would never pass um, industry standards and the reason for those standards is to enhance the reliability of, of completed electronics assemblies. And this is about as far from reliable as you can get. So kind of to wrap up, I want to give you an overall idea of, of what I'm talking about here is they basically purchased uh, one, two, three, four commercial off-the-shelf electronics components, stripped them from their original enclosures, um, glued them down inside of this thing, and in a slapshot, terribly inadequate way, they've soldered it all together um, to make this thing work. Again, this is open source. Uh, the software they're using here is called Hyperion. They've customized it, but only only barely. I could download the Hyperion app, and it was actually compatible with this product because that's how little they actually changed the or open source code to make this work. The only real innovation they, that you could say is that they had a, a web app that they made a custom UI for um, that is just basically a facelift and a slight improvement upon the actual app that comes with Hyperion-based products. So if you're looking for something that's going to work great and um, is reliably uh, constructed, this is not the product for you. All right, thank you guys for your time. Thanks for watching.